and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. The focus in this video is on examining the compatibility of various F-mount autofocus lenses using the F to Z adapter on Nikon Z mirrorless cameras. I tested the compatibility of all these lenses using a Nikon Z6, Z7, and Z50. It should all work the same on Nikon's new Z62 and Z72 cameras. Exposure modes and metering should work the same for all native Z lenses as well as adapted lenses. Where there are differences is with vibration reduction and autofocus. So let's get into them. Vibration reduction is turned on or off in the camera menu or eye menu for native Z lenses. With adapted lenses that have VR, VR is controlled by a switch on the lens. Doesn't matter what the camera is set to. The Z50, of course, doesn't have built-in VR. But the native Z DX lenses for the Z50 do, and they are controlled in camera. Native Z lenses that have built-in VR do not have a VR switch on the lens. It is always controlled by the camera. Uh, now remember one thing, uh, VR only works for camera movement. It doesn't stop subject movement. You need to use a fast shutter speed for that. Now as far as autofocus, there is a switch on native Z lenses to go between auto and manual focus. You can also do this in camera. However, both camera and lens must be set to autofocus in order to have autofocus. If one or the other is set to manual focus, you will be in manual focus. Now when in autofocus, you have the ability to go to full-time manual focus. And you do this by holding light pressure on the shutter release and turning the focus ring. When you do this, you can tweak focus a little bit or change focus to another object in the field of view. But also, in manual focus, you have the availability of several focus aids to assist with your manual focusing. In the lower left of the viewfinder or LCD, you have the electronic rangefinder. Works just like the electronic rangefinder in Nikon DSLRs. If you need to turn the focus ring to the right, you will see a triangle pointing to the right. If you need to turn the focus ring on Nikon lenses to the left, you will see that triangle pointing to the left. When you have achieved proper focus, the triangles will disappear and a circle will light up indicating correct focus. Also, you have the focus point turn green when you are in focus. Also, you can zoom in to the selected focus point by pressing the plus button on the back of the camera. Now, an easier way to do this is to program the OK button to zoom in 100% to the selected focus point. Now you're at 100%, you tweak focus, you get it to look sharp, press that button again to take you back to the normal view. You also have focus peaking, and you can select, pre-select, one of four colors and areas that are in focus, outline areas of the subject that are in focus will turn that color indicating sharp focus. Now with native Z lenses and only native Z lenses, you also have a focus bar that will appear towards the bottom of the viewfinder or LCD. It has a flower icon on one end and infinity icon on the other. As you turn the focus ring, that bar will move back and forth, left or right. Um, it's really not of much use. Okay, now let's see how adapted autofocus lenses work on the Nikon Z cameras. The first lens I examine is this AFS Nikkor 24 to 120 F4 G lens. The G means it does not have an aperture ring, just like native Z lenses. But this lens does have a VR switch. Now, as I mentioned earlier, lenses with VR switch, that VR is controlled by the lens. 
doesn't matter what the camera is set to. This lens also has a two position switch marked M slash A and M. M slash A works exactly like the A switch, the autofocus switch on native Z lenses. You have the ability of full time manual focus. You have all the focus aids except for that focus bar. Okay. The next lens I looked at is this AFS Nikkor 35mm 1.8G, but this is a DX lens. Okay, it doesn't have an aperture ring because it's a G. It does have a two position switch to go between auto and manual focus, just like the uh, 24 to 120. Um, doesn't have vibration reduction, but you do have vibration reduction in the, by setting it in the camera menu, except for the Z50. And one other thing, since it's a DX lens, it will set the image area to DX in the camera automatically when you mount it. All right, the next lens I looked at is this AFS Nikkor 300 millimeter F4 D lens, okay? has the AFS motor, the silent wave motor, like the 24 to 120. It has the full-time manual. However, this lens has an aperture ring. It is not a G lens. It has an aperture ring, and that aperture must be locked to the minimum. In this case, it's F32. If you don't do that, if you have it set to any other aperture other than minimum, you will get an error message, and the camera won't fire. Now, one other thing with this lens. This is a heavy lens, and in the instructions for the F to Z adapter, Nikon states that if mounting a lens over 2 pounds, 13.9 ounces, or 1,300 grams, that the lens should be supported when on the camera, or if you are carrying it over your shoulder with the strap, keep a hand on the lens, and if you're going to mount it on a tripod or monopod, mount the lens, not the camera, because this lens weighs 3.17 pounds or 1,400 grams. And most lenses that are of that weight have a tripod collar, so it's always best to use that. Now we're going to look at a few Nikon screw drive autofocus lenses. Screw drive lenses will not autofocus on Nikon Z cameras. They require a Nikon DSLR with a built-in focus motor. Z cameras don't have a built-in focus motor. They rely on a motor in the lens. Now, these screw drive lenses don't have motors in the lens. And the way the screw drive works, there is a fitting on the lens that looks like a slotted screw that connects to a fitting on the camera that looks like a slotted screwdriver. The motor in the camera turns that screwdriver looking part, which in turn turns the autofocus mechanism on the lens. This is a D lens. It has an aperture ring, which must be set to the minimum, in this case F22. Um, there is no autofocus manual switch on this uh, lens. You could always turn the focus ring. Okay, you have all those focus aids. Okay, another screwdrive lens I looked at is the Nikon AF Micro Nikkor 60mm 2.8D. It has a manual auto focus switch like the AFS lenses do. However, uh, of course you don't have autofocus since this is a screwdrive lens. And if you have it set to auto, you can turn the focus ring, but nothing happens. Focus mechanism doesn't engage. If you have it set to manual, you can then focus the lens. You have all your focus aids, and again, it, since it uh, has an aperture ring, must be set to its minimum. And finally, the last Nikon AF screwdrive lens I looked at is this AF Nikkor 35mm 2.8. This is not a D lens. Um, when Nikon first came out with autofocus in 1986, they were AF lenses. They were not D lenses. In 1992, they gradually switched over, started gradually switching over to D lenses, okay? So this lens, again, has an aperture ring, which must be locked down. 
However, because it is not a D lens, you lose half of your focus aids. You still have focus peaking, and you still have the ability to zoom in 100% to the selected focus point, or whatever percentage you want to the selected focus point. However, you lose the electronic rangefinder, and you lose that focusing point turning green. Of course, you don't have that focus bar because it's not a native lens. Oh, one, one other thing with the uh, non-D lenses. Your matrix and your flash metering may not be as accurate because these lenses do not transmit distance information to the camera. That's one of the things that that D means. It, it's that the lens is transmitting distance information, the focus distance to the camera. Now for a few third-party lenses mounted on the F to Z adapter. The first one I looked at is this Tamron 45 millimeter 1.8. Uh, this lens has VR built in, except that Tamron calls it vibration correction. It also has an autofocus manual switch. And doesn't have an aperture ring. Uh, it works just like Nikon AFS lenses, uh, with one exception. When you hold light pressure on the shutter release and turn the focus ring, you have none of the focus aids. You can tweak the focus. You can focus on another object within the field of view. However, you don't have any focus aids when it's set to autofocus. Now, if it's set to manual focus, you gain all those focus aids. Now, one other thing with this Tamron lens, and it holds true for almost all other lenses that can be mounted to Nikon cameras. Nikon lenses turn in one direction. Most other lenses turn in the opposite direction. So if you're using that electronic rangefinder and the triangle is pointed to the right, you must turn the lens to the left. If the triangle is pointing to the left, you have to turn the focus ring to the right. Just two more lenses to report on. First is this Sigma 17 to 50 2.8. This is a DX lens, so it will set this image area in the camera automatically to DX. It has an autofocus manual switch. It also has what uh, Sigma calls optical stabilization. Works just like VR, and there is a switch for that. Again, if that switch is on, you have VR. If the switch is off, you don't. Um, one other thing with this lens, however, it does not give you full-time manual focus. Um, if you're in autofocus, you cannot turn that focus ring, okay? You must switch the lens to manual focus, and then you have all your, your uh, focus aids, okay? Finally, the last lens I tested is this Sigma 15 millimeter 2.8 fisheye. This is a full frame lens, okay? It has an aperture ring, unlike the other Sigma lens, it doesn't. Uh, and of course, it must be stopped down to, it must be set to F22 and locked in that position. Um, this is a screw drive lens, so you will not have autofocus with Nikon Z cameras. Now, I only tested the three autofocus third-party lenses that I own. Most of the newer third-party lenses should work fine, but before purchasing, I would suggest you check the manufacturer's website to ensure compatibility. Right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this, my first YouTube video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and tap that bell so you'll be notified anytime I publish a new video. If you didn't like it, I need to know that too. I am open to criticism. It will help me do better in the future. I'll be publishing a new video every Wednesday morning. My next one will be on adapting manual focus lenses, both Nikon and third party, to the Nikon Z mirrorless cameras. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Or should I say, I hope you'll see me next time.